Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today I'm going to reverse my stance on the smudge brush just a little bit. Because in previous videos I've talked about the dangers of using smudge for blending. And the dangers are, it looks really bad. But in the years since that video, I've found myself using the smudge tool increasingly often. So I'm going to show you a few ways to make it way more effective. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. With the Smudge tool active, it's very important to click the Sample All Layers button. So here when I smudge, it's very visible. But what I've done is actually make this on a separate layer. And what that allows me to do is either with a mask or with the eraser brush to erase away what I don't want. So I have very tight control, because that's always the danger of the smudge tool, is that you just don't have the same kind of blending control that you do with the on-screen mixing method. So for that, doing it on its own layer is a must. But you still notice that it looked kind of bad. It looks a little bit like a marbling wand, and that's not what we want. So the next thing to do is to change the way the brush operates. So normally what I was using here to paint with was just a hard round brush, and that's why it's got such a severe edge. What we want instead is something that's a little bit more randomized. So with the brush settings, I'm going to change a few things. In brush tip shape, I'm going to make the spacing way wider, so you can see individual overlapping shapes. And then I'm going to turn on scattering and make it scatter a little bit like that. So now what the brush looks like is this. Not good at all for painting, but would work quite well for the blending. And let's see how that differs. So I'll choose my blending tool, do the same deal, move the spacing out a bit, turn on scattering. I'm going to make a new layer, make sure sample all layers is checked. And I'm actually going to turn down the strength to about 25%. Now that looks a lot better. All I did was move the cursor over this transition, and it very nicely gives a broken, soft smoothing, which I can erase away with the brush because it's on its own layer. So what you're doing is changing the brush settings to change the way that it blends. So if I wanted it to be a narrower gap, I would go to scattering, and reduce the amount of scatter. So here it's more linear and less random. I could also change the spacing here and make it more spread out and lower my strength. And now I'm going to have a narrower band of blending. So my experience with blending in this manner has been to make tool presets and forget about all these settings. Because you don't want to be opening up this brush palette, tweaking a bunch of knobs, and then doing your little bit of smudging. It really pulls you out of the creative flow. So instead, once you find a setting that works well for you, like let's say I really like this one here, then I'll make sure my tool presets palette is open. And you see here I have the current tool only check selected, and then I'll give it a name. So we'll call this narrow smudge. Now I can hide away all this, make a new layer, select the smudge tool, and now in my tool presets you can see I have one called narrow smudge. So I click that, and there I go. Another thing you can do with a smudge brush that's nice is to just use it to sort of diffuse areas, to lower the contrast a little bit. So the way I do this would be pretty similar. I'd select smudge tool, and I'm going to want to make settings that are only barely smudging it. So lower my strength way down. I'll enlarge my spacing, and I'll lower the hardness. And I'll use a really big brush, and we'll see how that does. can see this generates a lot of lag, and that might be because of the hardness. If I make that a little more firm, we'll see how it looks. Yeah, so this is similar to a blurring effect, but depending on the brush you used, it could have sort of a painterly look. 
So it's not really a blur like a photographic blur, but it is sort of a general soft smudging. And that might constitute yet another tool preset. So I'd call this soft smudge. So now with the smudge tool selected, I can do either soft smudge, which is big, or narrow smudge, which is not big. And I never had to open this really annoying brush palette here. I can just keep that closed and focus on the painting. So in my personal work, I still do much more on-screen blending than I use the smudge tool. But as you can see, there's certainly more to that argument than yes or no. If you figure out how to add a little nuance into this tool, it can be pretty powerful. So good luck and have fun experimenting. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.